The NBA season so far has been just so perfect, man. Now, I know some of y'all probably thinking, Mojo, what, what, what do you mean perfect? Efficiency stats are down all across the board, and also, my team is underperforming like hell. This season is competitive, dramatic, and chaotic as hell. What, what else could you want? Seeing all y'all on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and all the social media platforms be so emotional about the dysfunctional Lakers. Boston Celtics being mid for literally no reason, and the Hawks not meeting expectations. Expectations is easily one of the most hilarious things this past month. <laughs> Look at you being all emotional and stuff. Now, yes, we're like 15-ish games into the season so far, but my boy, trust me, this clear as day that there are certain moves that need to be made eventually. But before I go ahead and attack some of y'all, I'm going to attack myself first and expose myself, bro, okay? Just about last week, I spent a whole Mojo Monday Y'all know how special Mojo Mondays are to me, man. That's where I put all my best efforts when it comes to editing and when it comes to how to prepare for videos. I spent a whole Mojo Monday on Cam Reddish. <laughs> on Cam Reddish. And during that time period of me making that video, he was averaging like a cool 16, 15 points per game. Shooting extremely well from the three-point line. And of course, one of the main things that I harped on was his efficiency. Okay? Now, that video being made a week later now, he's over here shooting. 38% <laughs> from the field again. He's back. He's back to what college scouts, all of his haters and doubters have always known him to be. And that is inconsistent Cam Reddish, who's just not that much of a positive basketball player. Now, there still is hope, okay? There were only 15 games into the NBA season. And I'm trying really hard to keep my cool and not to bug out too much, but bro, this is not a good sign, and one of the reasons why Cameron is one of the first players in this video to be talked about when it comes to trades, okay? In this video, by the way, I'm not going to be forming trades that should and could happen. I'm just throwing out players that you should really keep your eye on. I think it's way too early to be forming trades involving other teams because just so much can happen. So many players can catch fire. So many players can go downhill. And Cam Reddish is one of those players who went downhill. For the Atlanta Hawks, I understand and you should understand that they are in a very tight situation when it comes to cap space. They re-signed Trey Young. They re-signed Clint Capel. They, of course, re-signed John Collins. They re-signed Kevin Herter. Okay, they paid all of those guys big bags and they're all well deserved. And none of those contracts, in my opinion, are steals. They they took care of their guys, okay? And eventually, of course, next year, we're gonna have to take care of two more guys. Those guys being out of our young core, DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish. And DeAndre Hunter, he's injured right now, bro. But even with his injuries, I would feel much more comfortable with paying him a bag and giving him what he he deserves so far into his NBA career compared to someone like Cam Reddish, okay? Cam Reddish has just been the definition of inconsistent. Whenever you're, you're trying to talk something positive or speak on Cam Reddish in a positive light, you have to always go back to a certain stint of games. It's never through a large sample size. It's always five, four, six, ten, ten games or something like that when you're talking about Cam Reddish. That has happened over the last few years of his not only NBA career but college career too and because of that and his inconsistencies I think that the Atlanta Hawks will go ahead and make that move and Travis Sink will probably go ahead and put him on the trade block and see what he can grab up for Cam Reddish because if he's not going to pay him then right now as we speak is his peak value while he's still under contract for another year and in my mind, it just makes too much sense. I love him, man. I, like, trust me, I'm, I was one of his biggest supporters, bro. Biggest supporters, if you ask me. But it's just the reality of the situation, and I've accepted it. So another player that is really awkward, it's really awkward that he's on this list because a lot of NBA fans, including myself, was rooting for this team and organization, and that is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, already they are like gone through some weird turmoil. They're always in the news for none of the good reasons. Whenever you see the T Wolves on the news, it's some cataclysm may happen. Okay, that's just how it is. At the start of the season, throughout the first four games, they're playing extremely well. They're playing winning basketball, and since then, they completely fell off a cliff. And on the court, they're as clear as day dysfunction when it comes to how they close out fourth quarters. Now, when you look at the Minnesota Timberwolves and how they compare to all the other bottom feeders in the Western Conference, this team right here should not be a bottom feeder. This team right here should definitely be better than a team like the Sacramento Kings. 
this team right here should not be next to the Houston Rockets or the one win New Orleans Pelicans in the NBA standings this early in the season. I don't care. You have the number one overall pick who's been balling out. You have D'Angelo Russell who, who's been, uh, yeah, he's been a little bit inconsistent, but he's starting to figure things out. And, and when he's played well, they end up winning for the most part. Then you of course have Carl Anthony Towns, who I thought at one point was one of the three best centers in the NBA, but now he's looking like one of the four or five. Okay, we're not getting into that discussion, but just know he is one of the most elite players in the NBA. What you have to realize is that the Minnesota Timberwolves do not have as much time as you think to go ahead and wait for guys like Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Edwards to go ahead and win. D'Angelo Russell is in the last year or two of his NBA contract right now. NBA contracts be fine like this, bro. And if I'm D'Lo, why in the hell would I stay with the team? Much dysfunction when I can mess around and go to other, some other team like the Celtics or whatever team that fits someone of his play style. I say that to say this. Someone like Carl Anthony Towns, he could get fed up enough to a certain point to where he just requests a trade in the middle of the season or at the end of the season. If the t Wolves do not at least, bro, make the play-in. There is no excuse to not make the play-in in my opinion. They are way too good for that. Or at least talent screams to me that they're way too good. Anyways, one of the next players that we're going to be talking about is, of course, the Houston Rockets' own Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon is balling out this season, y'all. He's been doing his thing, having a career year when it comes to efficiency. But the Houston Rockets, when it comes to doing their thing and balling out, there is no such thing. KPJ don't look like a point guard. Alan Green is not hitting most of his shots out there on the court and is not being the player early into his rookie season that we all thought he could. There's just a whole lot of bad going on on that team and Eric Gordon is one of the very few bright spots. And sadly, he's a 32 year old bright spot on this team full of super young 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds. And I would just hate to see someone like Eric Gordon who is a seasoned vet who's averaging 13, 14 points per game, shooting 48% from the field and 46% from the three-point line. He is an absolute sniper. A sniper that a lot of veteran teams in the NBA could possibly use. Now on that thumbnail, I know you see Eric Gordon in a Lakers jersey. And honestly, that's what I'd love to see too, but realistically speaking, there is no way in hell that this happens unless a team like the Houston Rockets are interested in trading for Russell Westbrook and, and swapping him for John Wall again. But realistically speaking, that probably isn't gonna happen. And if Eric Gordon was to find himself on a team like the Lakers, it would have to be like a three-team trade. But if he's not on a team like the Lakers, okay, just know that he's going to be a team who's in the same status and level as him when it comes to competing for a championship. What team could it be? I don't know. There's a lot of good contending teams out there in the NBA today in both conferences. Just know that Eric Gordon needs to be free. One of the last and really not that interesting, but yet as a hardcore NBA fan, so interesting storylines that I have to talk about is the Sacramento Kings and how they're handling Marvin Bagley. This man was told that he is not getting any minutes and is getting DNPs and the second that the Sacramento Kings go ahead and change their mind and attempt to put him in the rotation, Marvin Bagley is not having and he refuses to go ahead and enter the game and play another regulation game for the Sacramento Kings and for someone who was so highly touted and to be treated so poorly so early into his NBA career I don't blame him whatsoever and I would do the exact same thing I'm sure just the average human being would do the exact same thing so for obvious reasons Marvin Bagley is on the trade block someone else is on the trade block is the Detroit Pistons specifically Hamadou Diallo just this past summer a couple months ago bro he just got a not a big bag but a considerable slightly surprising bag if you ask me from the Pistons you were signed there for 10 to 11 million dollars a year and already of course he's not getting any minutes which is kind of weird and really awkward and I see why he just like Marvin Bagley refused to enter the game for the Detroit Pistons the other day and just know that these two players these two young players one of them is more important than the other. Marvin Bagley was a second overall pick. Hamadou Diallo was obviously not a second overall pick. Those two are going to be on the move soon, and they possibly could be on the move for each other. Now, of course, the Sacramento Kings are loaded in their backcourt on and off of the bench, so I don't see how Diallo would get too many minutes from them. In terms of Marvin Bagley potentially being at a Detroit Piston, that could actually come into fruition because just a couple days ago, I saw on social media, Twitter specifically, that Marvin Bagley's dad was in Detroit and he was talking Detroit up and I forget what he was saying specifically in the video, but just know that he was in Detroit and that is 
extra interesting. Anyways, those are just a few NBA players who could be on the move really soon in the midst of the NBA season so far. Let me know how your team's been doing. Let me know how uh, your favorite player's been doing. I can tell you how my team's been doing. Garbage, dog poop, bro. <laughs> when I was calling y'all emotional, I ain't gonna lie. That's just me projecting. I was me. I'm emotional, okay? But it's okay. I, I already admitted to it. I accept it. Now, I just want you guys to go ahead and leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, because this channel's struggling, bro. Do all that good stuff. And uh, outside of everything that I just said, I just really do hope that you make your day great. Until then, I'll get right with you.